When troubles come and my heart burdened be, then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me.
and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shore. Stand on 
what you, what you, what you, what you want to tell me? What you want to tell me? Good morning to you. My condolences here. Condolences. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. May the angels and saints of God receive our brother Paul Bosman Rene into the heavenly city of the new Jerusalem. We bless his body with holy water, which we call his baptism. Christ died and rose to life. May Paul Bosman Rene now enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to St. Mary's. As we gather here this morning in solidarity with the Rene family, as we pay our last respects and lead to rest the mortal remains of their friend and their brother, Paul Rene, whom a mighty God has called back to himself. At the very outset, 
I extend my deepest condolences to you the bereaved and pray God that our dear brother, our dear parishioner Paul Rennie may now enjoy everlasting rest and peace. At this time, my dear friends, I invite you to sit as I invite Camille and three children to come forward. Good morning, everyone. As we gather here today to celebrate the life of our <coughs> brother, Paul Boswell Rennie, we are united by the love and the profound sense of loss we all feel for a man whom I was so blessed to call dad and whose presence touched our lives in ways words can hardly express. My father was born in St. James on June 17, 1943, to Barbara and Paul Rennie, both now deceased. My father, who was affectionately called Junior by close friends and relatives, was the fifth and last child of his parents. So he was the baby of the family. My father worked as an accounts clerk at the National Agricultural Marketing and Development Corporation, NAMDEFCO, for 30 years from 1968 until he retired in 1998. He met his then future wife, my beautiful mother, while frequenting my mother's hometown of Carinage to do one of his most favorite pastimes, swimming on the beach. My parents fell in love and got married on September 8, 1974. They went on to have two children, my brother Kester and myself, and they celebrated 49 years of holy matrimony. My father loved his family and enjoyed being a parent and a grandparent. He was the proudest parent, always present and showing support even for the smallest accomplishments we made. He was the best father. He taught me the importance of kindness, and the value of integrity. He was always encouraging and supportive of his children, our goals, and anything that we wanted to do in life. He was one of our biggest cheerleaders. He encouraged us to try new things, even if we were far from best. I remember there was one time during my schooling at Trinity College that I decided that I wanted to be on the volleyball team and you know it was in the middle of a crushing defeat like we were losing terribly my teammates and myself we were all feeling pretty low at the end of the game but my father stood there at the sidelines continuously cheering us on you would swear that we were winning this game but we were terribly losing that was the type of father that he was he had a way of making us feel so loved and supported through everything in life, even through tough times. It was how he lived his life that shaped me to become the person I am today. He was a selfless person and had unending joy and optimism in the world. My father was a giver. He was always the first to volunteer to help anyone in need. I remember one time when I was in primary school and one of my teachers needed storage for the kids' lunch kits. My father decided that he would volunteer his services. He bought the wood and he built and painted some wooden storage shelves for my classroom. And I was so proud to be his daughter because the teacher was so grateful for those storage shelves and, it, and she let the entire class know that it was my father who built those shelves. I still remember the color. He painted it like a sky blue 
And those shelves lasted many, many years and helped so many children who passed through that very same classroom. One of the best lessons I've learned from my father was to always be kind and offer help to those who were in need. Never wait for someone to have to ask for help. If you know someone needs help, offer a helping hand. His selfless acts, both big and small, were a reflection of his belief that freely giving your time and efforts to others makes the world a better place. As Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget the way you made them feel. I am who I am today because of the values my father instilled within me. My father was a nature lover. He enjoyed the great outdoors. He was very active in hiking, and I'm sure his good friend Edmund could tell you the endless stories about the many adventurous hiking trips they made together. I was one of the youngest children to hike to the top of the second tallest mountain in Trinidad, El Tucuch, at the tender age of seven, the same age of my daughter Ariana right now. He believed in me, and he knew I would be able to complete such a challenging hike successfully, and I proved him right. My dad was so happy to know that his grandkids are following in his footsteps by becoming Cub Scouts and loving nature just like he did. My father was a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Field Naturalist Club, one of the oldest clubs existing in Trinidad. He was such a great nature lover. He loved swimming in the ocean and often spoke about swimming along barracudas and the time he swam in the Iron Man race to one of the five islands. Such great memories. My father also loved learning about the world. He knew so much about geography and science. He loved reading and he was an avid um, person involved in learning about all the different countries in the world. Whenever he visited me in Florida, he would talk to all my friends and they always loved hearing all the knowledge that he had. He was so down to earth and he made friends with everyone he met. His infectious smile was always welcoming to others. My father also taught me to keep the faith, to be thankful for your blessings and pray, as he always made sure to say our bedtime prayers at night when we were children growing up. I am passing on those same values to my children who love their grandfather so much. Their grandpa was always a joy to have around them. He took them outside to play. He let them drive their cars, their little motorized cars outside, even if the battery was low. And I said, no, grandpa will always say yes. Because he knew if the batteries in the car stopped working, he would take it upon himself to carry that heavy car back to the house. Because I was not doing that. <laughs> he took the kids swimming. He took them to the beach. His arms were always filled with one of his grandchildren once he was around. Aiden loved having his grandpa to do science experiments. They did so much together. The boys loved playing chess with their grandfather. And Nathan, he loves chess. He continues to, to participate in chess in school. And Ariana was the apple of his eye. She could not get enough of her papa, as she called him. The first thing she always did when he was at my house was wake up and go and go open his eyelids with her little fingers to say, Papa, time to go outside and play. Wake up. He spoiled his grandkids tremendously. When God was ready to take him home to be reunited with his mother, Mommy, as we know her, we felt that God knew best and we know that Daddy's time on earth was full of love. He had so much love for us, and we had so much love for him. God has gained another angel in heaven as we celebrate the joyful life of my father. I ask you to focus on the wonderful memories of him and dwell on those moments, for that is what he would have wanted us to do. Dad, your physical presence may be absent, but your spirit lives on and your laughter continues to echo in our hearts. Those who have had the privilege of knowing my father were touched by his gentle spirit, 
kind-hearted nature, and unwavering consideration and selflessness for others. He was a reliable presence in the lives of his friends and loved ones, always ready to lend a supportive hand, share patient guidance, and provide unconditional love and encouragement. His nurturing deposition was only matched by his steadfast character, earning the trust and admiration of all who knew him. It is not easy to say goodbye, especially to someone who was so giving of themselves to others. He leaves behind a legacy of kindness, compassion, and generosity that would forever live on in the lives of those who loved him dearly. As we continue to walk through life, his spirit will continue to guide us, his memories will continue to comfort us, and his love will continue to surround us. In the words of Toni Morrison, something that is loved is never lost. Rest in peace, dear dad. You will always be loved, always be missed, and forever be remembered. My grandpa brought me so much happiness to my life. He gave me, and he gave me love and showed me kindness. One thing I enjoyed doing the most with my grandpa was swimming. I know that he would be so proud of me because I made it on to the swim team. I will dearly miss my grandpa. I and I will never ever forget him because he will always be with me in my heart. My grandpa was the best grandpa ever. He was the most kind-hearted and fun-loving person I ever knew. The favorite memory I have with him is our camping trips together. Even though he is no longer here with us, his memories will live on in my heart forever. My grandpa was the best. He took me swimming, taught me to ride a bike, and accompanied us on many exciting adventures. He was nice, kind, caring, and fun to be around. My favorite thing to do with him was science experiments. While Grandpa isn't with us anymore, our hearts will always be full with joy in memory of him. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he died before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding. This is a man's gray hairs, untarnished life. This is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried up, 
so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts the simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet, people look on uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Lord. 
Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. The many rooms in my father's house, if they were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you, and after God prepared your place, I shall return to take you with me, that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's sit for a minute. Today, dear friends, the parish community of St. Mary's is saying goodbye to one of his faithful servants, our brother Paul Rene. My vivid recollection of Paul is that I never, I've never seen him without a smile on his face. That's a vivid recollection I have of him. And he's always, you know, with his wife, Kimoy. I always see them together. And he always has that kind of childlike attitude, you know, when kind and, and his daughter said, very helpful and very caring person. And I also recall a couple of years ago when I came to the parish as parish priest, he was always eager to say to me, Father, you will not be seeing me for a while, going over the children. He went quite frequently. He mentioned to me quite often, I remember. And he was excited, you know, thrilled. So, in fact, he was really a truly family man. So today we want to thank God for his life and to pray God for the repose of his soul and for the consolation the comfort given to his family. Death is perhaps the deepest mystery of life. We are not sure what it is, why it is, how to explain it. And here at St. Mary's, we do funerals so frequently, so frequently in excess of 130 a year. So we see all the time. And yet it remains a mystery. It has been a part of human experience since the beginning of time. And yet we understand very little about death. It is a paradox in the purest sense of the term. See me to say one thing while seeing another. <coughs> Death, for example, is gradual and yet sudden. And there's a, there's a sense, my friends, in which death begins at the very moment of birth. Then and there, life takes up its losing struggle with death. 
and the whole process of deterioration sets in and the forces of renewal fight against it but the final question or final outcome is never in question we end up in a coffin in a casket and so the presence of death is not immediately evident as a matter of fact usually many years before it is detectable at all but it is there from the very beginning as I stand here before you I'm actually dying before you you may not detect it so the path from the cradle always leads to the grave and the sands of time slowly slip away while the gradual process of death is at work. So the process of death is at work in every one of us here this morning. And yet, my friends, death always carries with it an element of shock. And even though we may observe its occurrence over a period of months and years, weeks, <coughs> it seems to come suddenly. So we think of the deceased brother Paul Rennie, and we say, I can hardly believe that he's gone. However long we expect it, we are never fully prepared, my friends, to give up those whom we love. Never fully prepared. As long as life is there, we hold on to it until the very last moment when it is suddenly taken away. This is a paradox. It's gradual. And yet, it is sudden. Another paradoxical quality of death is it is certain and yet uncertain. And the scriptures say to us, it's a point on the man who wants to die. So every one of us here today has an appointment with death. An appointment we cannot cancel. And the very essence of foolishness to actually ignore this appointment. But then comes the uncertainty. We don't know the day or the hour of that appointment. We just don't know. We can't mark it into a calendar or a diary. No. That's why James, the Bible says, you know, he says, you don't know what tomorrow holds. So you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live. My dear friends, there's a tombstone here at Lapras Cemetery here in Port of Spain. And it bears a very, there's a tombstone that bears a very, a very, very interesting inscription. And the inscription reads, Remember, friend, as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I, as I am now, so you shall be. Prepare for death and follow me. So death is an uncertain certainty. Having shared with you, my friends, the ominous cause of death, I want to conclude here this morning with a more comforting and consoling paradox, <coughs> which is death, my friends, is the end but so did also the beginning. So the earthly life 
of Paul Rennie has come to an end. His earthly journey has ended. He breathes no more. No more hobbies to perform. No more traveling. No more going and returning home. Death has interrupted all these things. And so, friends, there is an unmistakable and undeniable note of finality in the moment of death. But here is the beautiful part. The part that belongs to us through Jesus Christ. It really is it's not the end at all. It's only the beginning. And Paul would understand that he and his wife always at Mass here at St. Mary's. Several years ago, a very wealthy and famous Christian layman said this. He said, someday you'll pick up the newspaper and you'll read that I'm dead. Don't you believe it? I'll be more alive at that moment than I've ever been before. Again, in the Old Testament, the patriarch Job said essentially the same thing. And his words were these. I know that my Redeemer lives, and though worms may destroy this body of mine, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And finally, my friends, remember the promise of Jesus Christ when he said, He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So, we need not be afraid of death. Because for us Christians, it's a door to the followers and the friends of Jesus walk to a fuller and more meaningful life. Eternal rest granted to Paul the Lord. May so rest in peace. And may the soul of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. We stand. As we bring our petitions before God at this time. God, your mighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask you now to save all his people, living and dead. For Paul, who in baptism has given the pledge of eternal life, may we now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. For Brother Paul, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he will be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. For we see brothers and friends and for all who helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, they hear us. Lord, but those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. For the family, wife and children and friends, for a brother, Paul, that he may be consoling the grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here this morning to worship in faith, we be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. And now, in the silence of your hearts, I invite you this time to pray for your personal intentions. Lord, hear us. God will shelter our strengths. Listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayer we offer for the departed brother Paul Rennie. 
cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now sit, my dear friend, for the offertory. The collection will be taken up. I request of the family in support of the building fund here at St. Mary's. My sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, Lord, we pray to your servant Paul, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that any stain of sin have sprung to him. When any human form affected him, it may by a loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, that we would all escape from dying, and one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choir of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the heaven gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and given thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give you thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Paul Rennie, whom you have called for this world to yourself, granted he was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and hope died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not know sins from the feet of your church and graciously grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Make, 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 make two hands. You come in. Body of Christ. 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 Come. Body of Christ. 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 The Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body 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 Christ. Grant me, pure Almighty God, that your servant Paul Redding, who was guilty for this world, may by the sacrifice be cleansed and free from sin, and so receive the everlasting joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Once again, dear friends, let us paint the great poor's body holy water, which reminds us of his baptism. Through baptism, the body became a temple of the Holy Spirit. And as your reverence and dignity of that fact, we then incense his body. As the incense rises, we also light the house.
from the dead. And his commander of brothers of the Lord. The Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You attend to the prayers of the humble. And hear your people who cry to their need. Oh, him, oh Lord. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I invite your friends to extend your right hand to the casket that carries the body of Paul. Paul Boswell really. May the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And when Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. My dear friends, the funeral mass for dear brother Paul Boswell Rene is now ended. Go now in the peace of Christ. Glorifying the Lord with your life.
soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit